Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Casper's site. How the devil are you, mate? Welcome back to another Freaky Deaky video. But first of all, I'm not being paid for this. This is not a sponsorship deal. I wasn't approached by this person. I actually approached this person yesterday because I think that what this person is do doing and has done is absolutely phenomenal. It's, it, it's amazing. And I would like you guys to try and get behind it. Basically, the website is called Pegasus Ops. This guy, Darren Jordan, is ex, uh, is ex military, he's ex army, all right? So 10 years ago, he started up this business and now since then it's grown exponentially he's got now other like ex-army ex-forces all around the world working all together for one purpose and that is to retrieve rescue kidnap children uh, children that have been abducted used for god knows what all right um and bring them back to their families I like, and when i i think i saw his uh like a tiktok video y a year ago i was like wow what an amazing thing this person's doing he's basically thought look with all the skills that he's acquired over years right this is literally the real life taken you know the film taken this is the real mccoy this is the dude he started it up right so um he basically with his team goes all around the world searching for the kids that have been taken and kidnapped um and, and uh, like i say used for god knows what we we uh, can't imagine and then brought back to the families i think their main aim is to try to make it like a free service for the, the for the families that are looking for their their children okay so they need funding now guys i'm not asking you to do it but if you did want to, like, it, all you had to do is do like a quid or a dollar. They're not, they're not getting paid for doing this, you know? They're going out there to try to make a difference and to try to bring kids back to their families. You know that thought when you're in the supermarket and you turn around and your kid's not there? You turn around this way and he's not there? Your heart just like sinks. It thumps to the floor. But imagine dealing with that every second of your life because your, your child has been taken. And also for the children being taken like by some total random stranger for God knows what. In the 10 years that they've been up and running, they've saved 17 kids. And also, let me just say, that's five children this year since they're, since like the, like since it's grown. Yeah. They've saved five kids this year, which I think is amazing. So you just, and that's with like little funds. So just imagine if what we could do to try to help this person and this team go out there and do what they really want to do their passion is to bring kids back to their families now i'm going to leave all the links down below like there's a paypal link um there's other like forms of where you can donate as well but if you couldn't even do if you didn't want to donate or you can't donate even if you just went onto the website and you shared it on your your, your social media your facebook and all that sort of stuff like the exposure i think is also one of the main things that they these guys need so yeah if you did want to donate you what you could do is you could put like x amount and then casper site in the notes and then maybe next week I can contact him and I can say, hey, mate, how did we do? And uh, yeah, let's see. But thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. It just means a lot to me. So today we're going to be looking at a channel called Top Fives. All right, make sure you go over to this channel, subscribe and do the thing. I'm asking you to do a lot today. I'm sorry. All right. This video is called Five Scary Poltergeist and Ghost Encounters Caught on Camera That Have to Be Solved. Without further ado, da diddly day. Let's do this. Top fives. Poltergeists have been playing tricks on the real world for millennia, mm. leaving their spiritual realm to wreak havoc on us one final time, or maybe to get one last good laugh before entering the afterlife. With stories dating back to the first century, poltergeists really staked their claim for fame in the 1700s when they entered the paranormal lexicon amongst very own cultures. While the exact definition of what makes a poltergeist varies from country to country, one thing is true about all of them. They know how to frustrate even yeah. the most patient people and get under the skin of even the most resilient. Yes. It was once thought that poltergeists were native to specific areas and ransacked locations rather than people. Over the years, the thought process has changed and many now believe poltergeists return to Earth to torment a specific person, whether they deserve such terror or not. Their bag of tricks mm. no. ranges from levitating items to knocking down objects 
to trip. What the hell, mate? Tripping their victims downstairs. If there's a prank to be had, odds are the poltergeist will follow through. Luckily, with the advancements of technology since the turn of the 20th century, advancements of technology here we go mate people still recording with the potatoes it's been easier and easier to document potential poltergeist activity with cctv and other recording devices while the age of video editing has allowed for countless fakes to enter the fray there are still plenty of intriguing artifacts that may or may not give us a proper look at a true ghoul so hit those lights sit back and let's take a look at five creepy poltergeist encounters. Yes, on camera. yes, let's let's must let's must, mate. Blockbuster boogeyman. Blockbuster, mate, eh? Who remembers Blockbuster? That was bloody brilliant. Excellent. Once upon a time, Blockbuster was a thriving movie retail chain, mm -hmm. offering fans of cinema hundreds of selections in nearly every major city bloody across brilliant. North America. Brilliant. With the boom of streaming services and the decline of physical media, Blockbuster quickly lost its luster. Shops shuttered, the company's C-level executives liquidated their assets, and the one-time premium brand fell from grace, shattering like glass. Before Blockbuster Shocking. became irrelevant and turned their stores into ghost towns, one franchise ran into a different type of ghost in 2007. One evening at a sp the Blockbuster ghost. <laughs> small Blockbuster shop somewhere in Mexico, an employee cleared the building of any lingering customers and locked the front doors behind him. He had some of his shift remaining and was instructed to restock the shelves and prep for the following day's business. It was his nightly routine and everything was going as planned, until it didn't. At around 11.32pm, the employee in question brought his cart of fresh DVDs to an aisle within Blockbuster and started placing them on nearby shelves. Here we go, look mate. The first minute or so. This is straight from bloody Ghostbusters, you know, like in the library, all the DVDs are just going to go flying all over the shop, mate. Here we go. It doesn't show much, as the employee is out of the frame, but the real action starts at around the 11.33 mark. Take a look. Oh, shit. Oh, what? Mate, he's like, motherfucker, I'm At first, the car moves forward, seemingly on its own, a couple of times, before at intermittent points of the video, multiple DVDs fly from the shelves. The ghost is out! Where is it? Where is it? It should be an alphabetical order! It's possible there are strings at play, either pulling the cart forward or tied to the DVDs and thrusting them from their position. However, upon further inspection, it's highly unlikely, seeing as though some of the DVDs that move were handled directly from the cart, and the amount of strings necessary would have shown somewhere in the frame. Yeah! There's also the reaction of the employee that speaks to the video's authenticity. At first, he appears at ease, not really paying oh, much attention shit. to the cart. Then, when the first couple of DVDs... Mate, that shit doesn't happen! That's what I'm saying, mate! This ghost is like, where's Titanic 2? We don't have it, mate! It's not Titanic 2! Move. He seems annoyed, probably at himself for not placing the cases in a good upright position. It's the final Look. DVD movement that really chills the employee's spine. He's like... As he finally decides yeah, he's, he's gone, and he no longer feels comfortable. Maybe he's looking for ghost. Sure, it could have been a very elaborate prank by some bored night shift employees, but more than likely, this poltergeist brought misfortune to Blockbuster long before they were erased from society. Ooh, number four. Lady Lansdowne. A very specific type of poltergeists, rarely seen captured on camera, are spirits of someone who has since passed away, their souls sticking around on Earth to torment those still alive or to protect something they've left behind, and refuse to go on to the afterlife without. These poltergeists are usually aware that someone is watching, waiting to spot their mischief and ward the victims away. One potential example of a disgruntled poltergeist comes from the Lansdowne pub in Cardiff, the capital city of Wales in the United Kingdom. Cardiff! Lansdowne pub had recently been dealing with alleged paranormal activity, and the staff had been hearing murmurs of a ghost haunting the old building, often enough that some of them considered holding out from their shifts or quitting altogether. Mm -hmm. The pub's manager was skeptical, but kept a close eye on the situation, just in case there were tricks being played. Then in a bizarre turn of events, the manager was struck in disbelief, when just a month ago, in September of 2021, the pub's CCTV footage captured what appears to be a poltergeist moving a chair right in front of an employee Here we go, named mate. Hayley Budd during her break. Check it out. 
No, this is this, this is gonna be weird, man. This is gonna be weird as shit because this looks legit already. Let's go. Yeah, mate, that ain't happening. She's like, what the f, mate? I'm on my bloody lunch break. Haley seems genuinely put off by the encounter, watching with concern, and even that's fucking weird. Been checking underneath the table to see if anyone was hiding inconspicuously. In the end, she had no explanation except that the chair could have only been pushed by Lady Lansdowne herself, the spirit who haunts the pub and has become a folklore legend among locals. The manager doesn't agree and believes the paranormal prankster is the pub's previous owner, coming back to Cardiff as a poltergeist to spook customers into leaving and employees into quitting so that it will close down for good. The Bloody hell, well, that's a spiteful person, that isn't it? video eh? is so new, there isn't much to go in terms of other supernatural events that could back up the pub staff's claims. It's very possible the chair was attached to a string and the footage was staged to boost the publicity of the Lansdowne. It's true. However, the pub already has a pretty solid customer base and isn't in mm. desperate need of attention. Okay. So what do you think? Is the pub haunted by Lady Lansdowne herself or is the previous owner taking his revenge? after losing his legacy to the afterlife. <laughs> the previous owner, like, how spiteful is that? Like, it's previous owner, bloody dead, can't get over it, goes back and tries to haunt people out of there, mate. What the F? Get a life where you, where you used to have one, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the no disrespect. Staying within the borders of the United Kingdom, we take a closer look at the small civil parish called Whaley Bridge, a town in Derbyshire with a population under 7,000. Once known as an intense agricultural and coal mining community, Whaley Bridge has since been watered down into a quiet, unexciting village. With the bulk of its residents keeping to themselves and making the atmosphere of the town idyllic, raising a family or escaping into the countryside, However, like many small communities across the world, sometimes it's the more quiet and secluded areas that contain the strangest of circumstances. Yeah, and the most shit that goes on, mate. I used to live in a village, and shit goes on in the village, mate, let me tell you. Right? A lot more than a town. <laughs> Take, for instance, a Whaley Bridge convenience store that entered the consciousness of ghost enthusiasts from all corners of the internet in 2015. When a user by the name of Leanne Wilkinson uploaded CCTV footage to YouTube on October 26th. The shop itself is unnamed, but seems quite small in size due to the minimal amounts of products displayed throughout the store. The shop itself is unnamed. It's a bloody co-op, mate. It's there in green. <laughs> it's a bloody co-op. And lack of major grocery chains found in Whaley Bridge. With all that considered, the bizarre happenings caught on CCTV that day are especially troubling. Take a look and keep an eye on the subtle shadow moving around the frame. Oh, what? Okay. Oh shit, what the fuck is that, mate? What the F, man? Mate, that was a big ass shadow bastard, mate. Huh? That wasn't a shadow bastard, that was a shadow bloody bear. Oh, what? Oh, look at you. Hey, doing your, doing your weekly belly shop. Look at you doing your weekly belly shop. Oh, shit. Oh, mate, that's fucking horrible. What? At first we see nothing but a convenience store closed up for the night, but it doesn't take long for the supposed paranormal activity to be- Look at the size of that fucking thing, man! Sorry about the effing language, but look at the size of it! That's what she said. <laughs> Again, there's a wide breadth of behaviours too. First we see shadows gliding along the walls and shelves, followed by produce being thrown from their baskets. We also see a cart slide on its own, and the aforementioned fruit rolling around the floor untouched. Most chilling of all, though, is the storage door, door shaking violently in that the latter door, half mate. of the video, yeah. as if someone or something is attempting to escape. Why a poltergeist would sabotage a seemingly innocent little shop in Whaley Bridge is unknown, but ghost theorists believe whatever disturbed the spirit still lingers there was wronged by someone associated with the store, 
Or maybe someone who had a bad experience there felt they needed to terrorize the interior even after death. Yeah, their bloody coupons were invalid. Yeah, that's it. Didn't get your bloody coupons. There are also those who believe the footage was faked. They reason that the substitute shadows moving along the walls are simply the shadows of passing cars from outside. And the movement of the produce and cart was done by String and an off-camera employee who also could have shut themselves behind the door and shook it to make it look like someone was trapped. Oh, Regardless uh... if it's fake or not, the footage itself is quite spooky and has sparked an interesting debate in the otherwise docile Whaley Bridge. Mm. What do you think of it? I don't know, mate. That's pretty damn freaky deaky. Pretty damn freaky deaky. Basement dwellers. For the last half century, a popular sentiment shared by paranormal enthusiasts is that remodeling and or decommissioning homes can ruffle the feathers of ghosts and other spiritual entities. Oh shit, I, do you know what I've realized? I, I just bloody realized, mate. Look, look at you, your bloody face there. I didn't even see it. That reside in that specific location. It's thought that the noises and general chaos that comes with house renovations it's disturbs the off. spirits from their slumber. Some believe these ghosts are protected over their ground and feel that deconstructing their home is a threat to their peace. Others think that the ghosts and spirits become attached to the people who live within the walls where they linger, and that remodeling often signifies new hosts and new people the ghosts are unfamiliar with. If that's the case, it's no wonder a poltergeist might jumpstart into action when their borders are crossed and newcomers enter the vicinity without a proper welcoming. This type of haunting is what is generally attributed to the next video, a cell phone recording captured by a home remodeler who felt a supernatural presence at a house he was renovating in 2018. Okay. The exact details of the video are not well known, such as the gentleman's name or the location of the house, but it goes without saying the contents of the man's footage are spine chilling in their own right. The entire video is 3 minutes and 20 seconds in length, but the true madness begins at around the 1 minute and 30 second mark. Mm. Take a look and listen closely. Okay. Hello? You are right. The heck is that? Hello? Shit, it has it, we're around right, it! Oh shit, it out! Who is it? Oh, mate, he's pissed off. Who is it? <laughs> Bro, you pronounce the T, mate, you know you're pissed off. Who is it? <laughs> oh shit, no, I've seen this. I've seen this one. Mate, that ghost is moving the camera, dude. Mate, you just imagine seeing that. Looking back at the recording, seeing that shit, mate. I would sell the phone. The haunting begins. He's like, F this, man. I know I'm on double pay, but F this. With the door slowly opening as the worker approaches the kitchen area. When he investigates, he swings the door open and finds nothing in the room. Then, when the door to the basement slams shut, he opens it to find the lights flickering. What happens after this isn't 100% clear, but it appears the man drops the phone and runs out of the house. Yeah. If you listen closely, you can hear something or someone near the phone as it spins on the floor. It does smell, it, 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 smell, it does sound like a breath. It sounds like breathing. Could it be something from downstairs? Was it all a ruse? and there was a second person hiding, triggering all the pranks. Ooh. Most people believe the construction worker upset a poltergeist residing in the home, and it played enough pranks to unsettle both him and the viewers. The worker didn't have any extra information about the house, such as how long it had been there, or if there were any folk tales about previous owners. He did tell the channel he submitted the video to that weird vibes at the home were happening prior to recording. 
and this was the culmination of the strangeness abound in the home. Maximum the camera, also please! Said that the entire time he was there, he felt an unfriendly spirit hovering over him, and he truly did not want to return to finish the job. Shit. It's undetermined what ended up happening to the man or the house, but one thing is for sure, something was disturbed in that terrifying basement, and the violence of which the door slammed and the phone spun around does lead us to believe an unhappy poltergeist is to blame. What do you think? Yeah, mate, I think that's pretty legit. I don't know. I, 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 it could be fake, but... Jesus. That's good. Number one. The final. Malevolent Malaysian Mystery. In 2010, CCTV cameras at an unidentified office complex in Puchong, Malaysia, captured a man and a woman walking around the empty structures in the area just after midnight. The first building they are seen in looks like the entrance to a museum or large hotel with a food court and front desk visible on screen. After about a minute of exploration, the couple walks across the lot to another building. This one a series of rooms all connected via a path. Hey, let me, let, let me move my shit, let me move my shit. Pathway with various doors on the outside. The first room the couple enters is a dining room of sorts with tables and chairs set up as if a party or gathering had just taken place there earlier that day. At first, the couple sits apart, with the man laying his head down on the table, while the woman sits across from him. The man then moves closer to the woman, and the two seem to have a bit of playful banter between them. Their interactions quickly appear more hostile, though, when the man gets up and seems to argue with the woman. He almost leaves before the woman convinces him to stay. After the man stands directly in front of the woman for a few seconds, he sits down and the couple seemingly calm down. What's going Moments on here? later, the man once again stands up and leaves the room with his backpack. Yeah, mate, you've had it. The woman gets up to see where he went, but the CCTV footage shows he actually left the room completely and enters an adjacent room, where a few computers, along with a printer and chairs, are sitting undisturbed. What are they doing there? While the man attempts to make a call on his phone, the true horror begins, as the door slowly shuts behind him. Shortly after, the computers against the wall flash on and off simultaneously. The man, bewildered, bends down and inspects the outlets. Yeah, he's like, what the F is when going on here, mate? the continue to flicker, he runs out of the room. However, in the strangest of twists, CCTV never records the man leaving the building. Oh, what? As if he disappeared from thin air. One of the chairs in the computer room begins to move on its own. Here we go, the here we go. The door shut, and the ceiling lights turn off all at once, followed by the computer monitors. Jesus. Back in the dining room, the woman now sits at one of the tables, distracted by something on her phone. She turns behind her, though, when a chair further back in the room moves on its own. It's here oh. that the woman decides she's had enough yeah. and pulls out her phone to call someone, but never just, gets the just chance get out to talk of there. to anyone. Take a look. Just get out of there, mate! It's so, what's the phone good? What well, shit in now? Yeah, she's bricking it. She's like, motherfucker, I'm gone! I'm gone! Oh, fuck! Way! She's just been knocked the F out! Oh shit, hang on, let's go back here a minute! Look at all this shit up here going on. Hang on, look, I, like, I, okay, let, let me get my, let me get my camera up here a minute because you gotta see what the F is going on here, mate. Look! Look at this! Now, now that's fucking moving. So I, I, I'm playing. Do right, let's just put it in the center here, mate, because everything's going off in the bloody corners. Look, that's fucking floating about. Once the this second is chair moves. Oh Jesus Christ! Get, move. <laughs> Next to the woman, she panicked and ran away from the commotion, only to be bombarded by moving tables and chairs when she attempted to flee. Jesus! When she backs Mary away from the doors. It almost appears as if she's attacked by something invisible. And then, and then, and then, th th this goes off. Then, after a few moments of silence, the pile of chairs and tables moves before a chair in the back Shit is thrown across out. the room, followed by the movement of the poster on the left wall. The woman was emotionally scared by the incident and ended up being so traumatized. She fucking hit her head on that. She hit her head hard on that table as well. Look, watch. The woman was emotionally scared by the incident Fuck and ended up being Fuck. so traumatized. Although there are conflicting reports now, he was eventually found as recently as 2016. However, these have not been confirmed. The entire ordeal was so bizarre that a team of documentary filmmakers from Malaysia visited the office complex in 2015. 
to produce a film about the infamous CCTV footage and explore what exactly might be haunting the building. The crew ended up feeling possessed themselves at a certain point during filming. What? And they were unable to find a true answer as to what happened to the man and the woman in 2010. Many people originally believed the building where these events took place was a hotel. However, the main portion of the video took place at a driving school in Puchong. Some are skeptical about the incident, theorizing the footage was faked to make it appear the man never left and that the entire thing was acted out. Could have been. Whether or not you believe the footage to be that of a real poltergeist, the sequence in the computer room and dining room are bone chilling. And if there is a spirit stuck in those spaces, it doesn't appear to want anyone to make it out alive. Hopefully, regardless if the video is fake or not, the woman in question is able to make a full recovery and heal from the trauma. Mental health is no joke, no matter the circumstances, and even if this was an evil prank gone wrong, a human's life is in question. And yeah, mate, imagine that, if that was a prank. If that was a prank, he did that as a prank on her. Right? All because she wouldn't kiss him. Like, that goes to another level, mate, of, like, evilness. That should always be taken seriously, above all else. So what do you think? Were these prime examples of poltergeists revealing themselves on camera? Or just a series of elaborate hoaxes meant to melt the mind? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Ooh. Thanks for watching. No problem, mi amigo. There you go, mate. That was top fives. Thank you so much, mate. We saw one before, I think. But other than that, mate, they were bloody brilliant. And I like the... I like the way he was talking about it. It's epic. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you did like the video, how about leaving a like? And if you're new to the channel, subscribe and do the thing. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.